All right, when we learned this stuff, we learned substitutions. Like we learned that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So I can replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. And we also learned that x is r cosine theta. So we can replace x with r cosine theta. And then it says it wants us to solve this for r. So what if we just go through and divide both sides by r? And then we have r equals 2 cosine theta. Ta-da! Polar coordinate. All right, this time we're going the opposite direction. We're changing from polar to rectangular. But it's kind of the same idea. Notice how with this problem at the end, we divided r to put it in the form we wanted it in. Well, this one is starting in that form with r equals something. But it's not convenient to replace x squared and y squared with r squared because there is no r squared. It's not convenient to replace um, the trig part with a tr with x or y because there's no r in here. So it would be good to multiply everything by r, right? But the other thing though that's going to be helpful besides multiplying everything by r, how come it doesn't change colors when I tell it to? Yeah, we want to actually change it. Maybe we don't want to multiply by r because look what happens if we change the cosecant to sine. That doesn't help us put the r here where we want it to be. So obviously sometimes we have to experiment a little bit and see that what we had planned is really not going to be as good of a move as we thought it was. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my move so that instead of turning that into an r squared, I'm actually going to be turning it into 1. And the result of that is that I will end up with an r, because I'm dividing by r, next to the sine after I change my cosecant to a sine. So then that allows us to change 6 over r sine theta into 6 over y. So 1 equals 6 over y, and then all we have to do is cross multiply. Yep. It's just a line, right? Just a horizontal line. Well, so this is question 16 from the review. We're going to change this to polar first. So to do that, we want to find r, which is the square root of the negative square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, then we want to find theta, so we're going to do that by doing the inverse tangent of negative square root of 3 over 1. So that gives us a quadrant 4 angle, which is a 60 degree quadrant 4 angle, correct? So that would be negative pi thirds, I think. Double check me if you think I'm wrong. I appreciate your effort. So... Oh, uh, yes, I did that backwards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, yep, I get, I get going. So pi thirds would actually be pi six, correct? So, no, don't apologize for helping me fix an error that would lead us astray and make us angry later when we discovered that we did it beginning. So double check all of that to make sure you're not making those same mistakes that I keep falling into. Okay. So, yes, y over x, it's slope. It's the rise over the run. So, thank you for that correction. So, we have negative pi over 6. Now, what I told you earlier is to make sure you check that quadrant. So, this is, this is left and up. So, quadrant 2 would mean that it's not negative pi over 6. Yes. Q2 is 5 pi 6. So now we can change this to, um, we can use our CIS form if you'd rather. So CIS theta, or you can use the R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. Remember those mean 
the same thing. The answer is given, like they don't use the CAS form on this test at all, just so you know, but it's fine to write it out on your paper that way as long as you know what you're doing because it's a shortcut. So that gives us two CIS 5 pi 6. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're going to use Dimovers theorem. So now it's theorem time. So we have this is our polar form to the fourth power. So for our theorem, we go two, is it two to the fourth power? It's been a while since I've done this. So if you are remembering this from having recently looked it up or been working on it, make sure I'm remembering this correctly. And then it'll be, I'm going to actually write this out, cosine of five pi six times two, no times four. because we're, we're multiplying by that power. So it's two to that fourth power, but then we're multiplying the angles by the fourth power. Plus I sine of five pi six times four. So that gives us two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. And then we have the cosine of 20 pi over six. So that would be 10 pi thirds plus I sine of 10 pi thirds. Um, it would be nice if we knew what 10 pi thirds represents, right? So 10 pi thirds, I'm going to subtract out 6 pi thirds to get a coterminal angle of 4 pi thirds. Okay, so I'm going to do 16 times the cosine of 4 pi thirds. So that's the third quadrant, and the cosine of pi third is one half, but it's the third quadrant, so it's negative one half. And then the sine of four pi thirds, also third quadrant, also negative, but it would be negative square root of three over two. So then we distribute our 16 through, and we get negative eight minus uh, 8i square root 3. Did I simplify all the pieces in my head properly? Because I distributed the 16 and I've got the negative and 2 goes into 16 8 times. So that is our answer in um, A plus BI form, which is what you're actually doing on the test, is leaving it in that form.